praise you in this place. And even at home as we're watching online, we praise you because we say you're a good God. And you've not ignored us. You've heard our prayers. In fact, you invite us to know you. We say and we proclaim in this place, you are good. We proclaim in our hearts that you are good. And even here, when I say God is good, you say all the time. Let me try it again. God is good. And then I say all the time and you say God is good. Yes, he is good. We worship you today in Jesus' name.
Well, good morning, and good morning to you watching online. My name is Amanda, and I'm going to lead you in communion today. I'm so excited. So during uh, the, the third worship song, I will be inviting you to go back and receive our elements. And if you're watching from home, go ahead and grab some juice or some bread so you can partake with us. But I want to read a scripture to you to remind you why we do communion, why we partake. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, Jesus, we know, was about to go to the cross and give his life for us. And on the night before, he gathered his disciples around the table. And it says, on the night of his betrayal, he took bread, he gave thanks, he broke it, and he said, this is my body that's broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after the supper, he did the same thing with the cup. He said, this is the cup of my blood, my new covenant with you. And every time you drink this cup, remember me. And then I like this part. It says, what you must solemnly realize is that every time you eat this bread and every time you drink this cup, you reenact the words and actions of the death of the master. Every time we take the juice and every time we take the bread, we are remembering the highest price that was paid for you and for me so that we could live a life of wholeness and a life that's free and forgiven. And so the bread that we're about to partake together, it resembles his body that was beaten and broken for us. So if you're in need of healing, physical healing, mental healing, as you eat that bread today, I want you to believe in faith that you will be made whole. And as you drink that juice today, I want you to examine yourself, examine your heart, and see if there's any area where you need to be forgiven and the Holy Spirit himself will forgive you. That's the price he paid. That's the free gift he gave us is healing and forgiveness. That's what we do when we take communion together. We receive healing and we receive forgiveness. So I'm gonna pray and any time during this next song, right in the back, you can make your way back at any time and partake of the elements when you're ready. Father, we thank you that you you paid the highest price for us. We so easily could have taken your place, but you instead were the substitute for us, Lord, the lamb that was slain. Father, we thank you for the freedom we have, for the blood that you shed on the cross, God, that we can be totally cleansed, cleansed in our mind, cleansed in our bodies of all iniquity. We thank you, God, that because of all the lashes you took upon yourself, God, that we can be completely whole and physically strong and well in this earth, in this life. And Holy Spirit, would you come today as we partake and commune together and minister us that life. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. During this next song, when you're ready, you make your way to the back and you can take the communion when you're ready. Amen. i 
faithfulness this morning. Welcome. My name's Anna. This, this, my name is Micah. Sorry, we right. had technical difficulties there. We're on. Well, we are so excited you all are here today. If you're new, my name is Micah. This is Anna. Hi to everybody on Church Online. Good morning. Hello. And Anna, I've heard we had some great stuff happen over the last week. Yeah. What's going on with that? Yeah. So we kicked off 21 days of prayer and fasting one week ago. We're one week in. We got two more weeks to go. We got some great resources for you on praythebay.org. So go there uh, for some resources just to help you on your fast. And the other thing, was last week we had this gathering called Belong for all of our newcomers, and we had 10 new people come and get connected awesome. to grow wow. deeper, so it was awesome. That's incredible, good stuff happening. Well, if you guys are new here, we're so happy you are here. We'd love to get to know you, and we have a special gift for you in the back. My wife and I would love to connect with you after the service, so see us in the back there. And then we got some great stuff coming up, so if you wanna find out all about that, Follow us on Instagram, EXP Church. We've had these great trailers coming out for 21 Days of Prayer, and then also the Renaissance Conference, which we'll talk about later. Yeah, so speaking of prayer, we're praying church, we love to pray. We wanna invite you to partner with us, to link with us and pray during our prayer chain. So you can go to praythebay.org, find a time slot that works best for you, and we're gonna be praying at all hours of the day be awesome yes and then we have a renaissance worship conference coming up yeah. let's put our hands together for that we have pastor banning from jesus culture he's gonna be lead us in that i am looking so forward to that don't don't forget to sign up we are selling out fast there's a couple spots left i think a couple spots so we got a few so if you are on the fence sign up now don't stall anymore yep all right, well, right now, we're gonna invite you just to turn to your neighbor, say hello, and we're gonna get started with the message in just a second. You'll come through again, 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 and again. Oh, but even if you take your time. If you're out in the back, join us in the front. So excited to be able to bring to you the word today. Good morning. Turn to the person next to you, say good morning. Are you ready? All right, before we jump in, take a look at this amazing video. Hey everyone, Benny Leapster here from Jesus Culture. I cannot wait to be with you for the Pray the Bays Renaissance Conference. I tell you, more than ever, it is so important that we gather together as the people of God to lift up our voice in prayer, to go deeper, to grow together, to ask God to come and anoint us for revival in our day. Arthur Wallace has this quote, that revival involves two awakening cries, God crying to man and man crying to God. He says this, when the cry of the Lord has awakened the church, the cry of the church will awaken the Lord. And I tell you this, I believe with all of my heart that God is awakening his people. 
that there is a cry coming from God that is awakening His people. And our response is this, that we would come and say, awake, awake, put on strength, the arm of the Lord, that we are going to see God move in our day in profound ways. So I'd encourage you to come, Renaissance Conference. You can check it out, praythebay.org slash renaissance. And I believe that you're going to encounter God and He is going to awaken a cry within us to see revival in our day. your tickets. We have sign up in the back. You cannot miss this. It's going to be incredible. I have my friend here with me, Lay. Give it up for Lay. <laughs> Lay and I, we were talking this week about our fasting and I was like, Lay, you got to share what you're doing because it is crazy. We, as a church, we've been doing 21 days of prayer and fasting. Lay, how is it going? Um, it's, it's not fun. I'll say that. It's really hard. Um, so I am doing four things right now. I'm not eating red meat. I'm not drinking soda. Uh, no social media. And the hardest, and I told Ty this, is no shopping. So like, even my bank account is really happy with me, but I'm really sad. I, I'm not sure which part of my brain thought it was okay to do all four at one time, but... Um, fasting is not supposed to be easy, so I really, no. I really try this year to do something different. Okay, I'm not there yet. Yeah. <laughs> I can give up all foods, but no shopping. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the hardest part is like not scrolling after work, but I tend to do this. this yeah. This is what I needed to have a wow. limit. Wow, yeah. wow. But tell, tell us, like, are you, how's your intimacy with the Father? It's definitely a lot more deeper. It's not as shallow as it was a few weeks ago or even wow. during the holidays. Um, I definitely catch myself now with God interceding into my thoughts, which is like awesome wow. because instead of me listening to music, I could be listening to a podcast. Wow. Um, and yeah, I'm just trying to learn his language with me this time. Wow, that's beautiful. Yeah. Learn his language. Doesn't fasting just open our eyes and ears so much more? Yes. Um, it <laughs> allows me to be a little bit more sensitive to how I want to interpret his voice and it helps me discern what my desires are because. I mean, that shopping list is a little insane. So <laughs> my desires are definitely a lot more different from what he wants um, to put in my life. So I think that's pretty much been helping me a lot. Wow. So, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Lay. Good luck, Give everyone. It up. Thank you so much for sharing. And if you are here and this is your first time fasting, we do have some guides in the back to help you. We want to be able to support you as a church community as well. We are walking through a new series called Faith for Normal People. And last week, Pastor Mark really defined what faith really is. And he said that Jesus chooses normal people like you and I to say, follow him. And if you missed that teaching last week, I encourage you to go to our YouTube channel. The teaching is there and you're able to grab that in Jesus' name. And today, church, we are going to meet God in a deeper level. And we're gonna talk about what we need to do to fight for our faith. And I do believe if you walked out in here today feeling fear or feeling doubt or anything in your heart, I do believe that God is going to give you the freedom that you need today. I do believe that God is going to awaken this passion inside of him, this, inside of you, this love for him. Amen? Before we start out, let's pray. We pray as a church. We love to pray over um, our pastor's friends in the Bay Area. And today, join me in praying uh, for Kristen and Matt from Refuge Church in Salinas, Monterey County. Let's pray for them. Extend your hand. Father, we thank you so much for Matt and Kristen, God. We thank you for their hearts, God. We thank you, God, that their heart desires a deeper intimacy with you. We ask that you would be with them and for them, that you would raise up people, God, to help them, God. I pray for their church that even today as we pray right now, God, that they would encounter your presence like never before. God, and I pray, God, that they would just have this sense of passion and that they would burn for you like never before. In Jesus' name, and let's pray for the teaching. Put your hand in your heart. Father, so often we get distracted when you're speaking to us. Father, would you just take away any distraction that will try to come into our minds and hearts today? Any worries from yesterday, we say go in Jesus' name. Any worries for today, we say go in Jesus' name. Any worries for tomorrow, we say go in Jesus' name. And God, I ask that you would speak to us and that we would leave this place transformed. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Today I get to preach 
my son's favorite Bible story, the story of David and Goliath. And I do have to say that it's also my favorite story because I had some David moments as I grew up. I was the youngest of all, of everything in my family. I was the youngest daughter, the youngest um, sister, the youngest cousin, the youngest granddaughter, and I had to learn how to fight. <laughs> And I'm also from Brazil, so if you know the UFC, Jiu-Jitsu, Capoeira, all of those fights are from there. So I had to learn from a young age. But I do remember when I was brought to the U.S., I was 12 years old, and I remember my first day of middle school. I actually moved to the mission just a couple blocks away from here, and I went to a school named Luther Burbank, and the school was so bad that it closed right after I left. It, had, it didn't have a good reputation. And I remember my mom saying, Ty, when you get there, you're going to sit in the front and you're going to do all the work. So I did as an obedient child. And the teacher would speak to me and I didn't know how to respond. I'm like, no English, no English. And all the kids would make fun of me. And throughout these months that passed by, a group of kids gathered together and they began to bully me. I would walk in the hallways and they would laugh. They would say something to me and I'll be like, no English. And for months and months, this started to happen until one day, until one day, I Googled how to say these two words because my English vocabulary was so bad, still is. But back then it was really worse. And I said this, I looked at them. Come on, DJ. And I said, I told her, I fight you. <laughs> and, and she looked at me like, what? You know how to speak English now? And I said, I do. I fight you. <laughs> and we began to fight these two little girls. By the way, don't do this. Physical violence is not good. Uh, and guess who won the fight? No one did. The teacher broke it off. But anyways, <laughs> but anyways, today we're going to talk about this type of fight. And the fight, it is um, just over our faith. Every single day, there's a fight over our faith. And we need to choose to fight for our faith. Amen? The Word of God is just so good. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against rulers. So our fight is not against people. It's for people. So in, in 1 Timothy says, fight the good fight of faith. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Are you ready? Turn your Bibles to 1 Samuel 17 verses 32 to 37 with me. Let's embark in this story together. All right, let's read. David said to Saul, let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. And Saul replied, you're not able to go against this Philistine and fight him. You're only a young man, and he has been a warrior for his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant has been keeping this, his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it, struck it, and rescued the sheep from its mouth. And when, I turned, and, and when it turned on me, I seized it by its hair, struck it and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them because he has defied the armies of the living God, the Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from this, for the hand of this Philistine. Saul said to David, go, the Lord will be with you. All right, so let's paint the picture right now, all right? There is a battle. On one side, we have the 49ers. The other side, we have the Seahawks. Too, too soon? Okay, let's keep the Philistine and Israel army, okay? But you get the picture now? And these Philistines kept tell, you know, going there and wanting to fight, and the Israel armies were scared to fight them. And this giant named Goliath, commentator said that he was about over nine feet tall, kept going and say, hey, is there anybody amongst you that would fight me? And all of a sudden, David, our DoorDash guy, he just goes there to deliver food, but then he sees that the army is really back down in fear, and he ends up having to fight this giant. And um, 
here. We're going to walk to what, what it really, really happened to David. And, and Saul looks at David and he says, you're not able to go fight this against this Philistine. You are a young man. And church, this is what happens. The enemy wants you to believe that you can't fight. Because he doesn't want the smoke. He doesn't want to lose. So he he wants to put thoughts in your mind that you're not good enough, that you would never win over the battle that you're fighting, that that fear that you're fighting against will never be conquered, that that addiction that you're fighting against will never be conquered. And David, he didn't hear what Saul said. He said, you know what? No, I am fighting with the Lord's army. And he stand there and he fought against this giant. And you know what happens sometimes when we begin to hear these thoughts, it becomes our feelings. And we then begin to believe the lies of the enemy. And all of a sudden, the fear that was just a thought, it becomes like something so real in our hearts. And we need to learn, friends. We need to learn how to win your thoughts before you lose your feelings. And this is what Paul teaches us in 2 Corinthians 10, 5. He says, take every thought captive to obey Christ. And sometimes we do. Sometimes we get these little thoughts and we take a feel of them captive. But then some of them miss. And then all these thoughts begin to sink into our hearts. All this fear, the doubt, and everything that the enemy tries to bring to us. And we then begin to believe it. Joyce Meyer says this, it's not that you don't have faith. It's not that we don't have faith. It's just that Satan is trying to destroy our faith with lies. And today we're going to expose some of these enemies of faith together. First one, the biggest one, fear. Fear, false evidence appearing real. And there is a difference, a difference between fear as a reality and fear as an illusion. Fear as a reality. Okay, I see a spider. I haven't figured out that one yet. It's still an illusion for me. I see a spider. (laughs) I'm not going to touch it. But fear is an illusion. It says, if I touch it, I will die. I will die. I will die. This like begins to grow. The feelings begin to grow in your heart. And fear, it is the biggest enemy of faith. A few weeks ago, a few months ago, actually, I got a phone call from this friend of mine that I haven't spoken to her for years and years. And she's just very, she was very persistent. She kept calling and calling and calling until I was like, okay, she must be in some sort of trouble. Let me, let me answer her phone call. And she calls me and she says, I am going to kill myself today. And I said, no, you're not. What's happening? Let's talk this through. It so happened that she had met a guy and this guy promised her that, this, that if she put all this money, it was about $70,000 into this investment, that it was going to be this amazing, she was going to triple that amount and it was going to be this like fairy tale type of story and she believed it. So she's like, Ty, I've lost everything. I actually went to my boss and I told my boss that my dad was dying. So she would borrow me some of this money. It was like a crazy, the craziest scenario. The enemy really just really put her on the sidelines and she just didn't see a way out. And I said, here's the thing, we're gonna pray about it and God is gonna give us like an insight, a wisdom of what you should do. And I'm gonna walk with you and you're not going to kill yourself. But you see what happens, she then she has a situation in place and now the enemy is telling her that there is no way out. I said, girl, you're healthy. You have a career in front of you. You're gonna stand up again and this is just gonna be part of your story. And we began to pray together and she began to see the other side of her story. And how many times this happened to us? Let me tell you something. If you walked in with a situation that you're carrying today and the enemy has told you that there is no way out, I want to remind you that there is a way out, that you are the son and daughters of the Almighty and you don't fight just against flesh, but you fight with the Lord's army. So he is with you. He is for you. Am I preaching to the right church today? He is for you. Amen. The second thing is disappointments. Maybe you've lost, you lost faith in people. Maybe you were so disappointed that you cannot trust and believe and have faith again. Maybe it's deception. And how about doubts? See, the Bible says that the giant was there for 40 days and 40 nights threatening the people. 
And now the Israel's armies are on the sideline thinking that they could not win this battle. And now it takes this boy who had faith because he understood who he was fighting with to win the battle. And how many times we lose faith faith because we can't see the way out? How many times we lose faith because we forget who we are in God, in Christ? And the issue is we need to understand who we are. And we need to understand the weapons that we can fight with. Amen? David, he chose faith when the Israelites' army chose fear. David understood that he was not fighting alone. He understood that he was anointed. He was separated. He was called for such a time as the the time that he was at. He was set apart. He understood that the giant wasn't only coming against him, but he was coming against the armies of the living God. The word of God in Romans 1, 17 says, for in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. And it's, it is written, but the righteous man shall live by faith. Friends, what weapons are you fighting with? When these thoughts begin to form in your mind that you would never get married, that that career path you're choosing will never be a reality for you, that you are not qualified enough, that you are not good enough, what weapons are you fighting with? In Ephesians 6, 16, it says this, and in all circumstance, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. We need to understand the word of God so we can fight with the word of God. God has already prepared you for, ba- for battle. The story that you have, the testimony that you carry, no one else has the same story that you do. God has already positioned you in a place and he has given you tools for you to take hold. Amen? Don't let your guard down. It will, not, it will not be easy. I know it's not easy. I know it's hard to fight every single day and fight the thoughts in your mind and fight the feelings in your mind. Joyce Meyer, from the same book, The Battlefield of the Mind, amazing book. She says, if you only do what's easy, you will always remain weak. We always pick the easy way out, <laughs> Right? But now I want you to write this down because I'm going to give you three tools that you can fight with. The first one is fight with past victories. How many times we forget the victories that God has brought us through, the testimony and the story that God has given us. First Samuel says, the Lord who rescued me, uh, am I... Yeah, the Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. That's what David said. He understood that he had to fight a bear. (laughs) He had to fight a lion. And now God had positioned him for the bigger fight. And he was like remembering the, the fights that he fought. And that gave him strength to fight that fight. We're going to take some time right now to break up into groups in our church. We love when we talk amongst ourselves and we call this moment the Selah moments. It's a Selah question. And I would love if you could share with the person next to you or in front of you this very question. What is a past victory that you can fight with? Share amongst yourselves.
so much for sharing, guys. I love seeing you guys talk amongst each other there. So we fight with past victories and we fight with prayer. In Ephesians 6, I love Ephesians 6 because it talks about the armor of God. And this is what it says. Read with me. It's on the screen here. It says, therefore, take up the whole armor of God. How many times we just take a piece or another? Take all, take the whole thing that you may be able to withstand the evil day and having done all to stand firm. Stand therefore, having fasted on the belt of truth and, um, sha um, and sh shaving put on the breastplate of righteousness and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace and in all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times, say all times, and the spirit with all prayers and supplication. We gotta learn how to fight with prayer. We gotta learn how to pray at all times. So when these thoughts begin to come, we rebuke it now in Jesus' name. When the thoughts come, you say, mm-mm, mm-mm, you're not getting in my head because I do have the mind of Christ and this thought will not become a feeling that I carry. Amen? So, uh, third thing, fight with the word. Just the, ve the verse that we read and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Do you remember the story when Jesus is taken up to the desert and the enemy is testing him and it's coming after him and he's saying this, this, this and Jesus is like, no, it is written. So we need to remember the word of God so we can fight with the word of God. It's, only, it's the only offense weapon that we have. It's this very book right here. That is why we got to meditate a day and night so we can have the right scriptures and the right promises to fight with. Amen? And lastly, m most importantly, and it's what we're doing right now, fight with fasting. We, it's just so incredible to see you. I looked at the 24 seven prayer chain, the sign up that we have. If you haven't yet signed up, you can go to praythebay.org. And on the 21 days of prayer, it talks about how we're doing a 24 seven prayer um, chain with churches and believers across the Bay. And I looked as of yesterday and there was five, over almost 500 and something signed up, filled, spots filled of people praying across the Bay area. It's so good when we get in there and we see so many names signed up and we're like, hey, I am not praying and fasting alone. There is an army of people praying and fasting for the Bay Area. Amen. And I, there's, a, there's a scripture in Matthew 17, 21, and it's the story that Jesus was with the disciples and there was a woman, you know, that was possessed and they begin to pray and, and they were like, hey, what happened, Jesus? Like, why didn't you know, she was delivered and he's like, but this kind is cast out only through prayer and fasting. And maybe you're walking here and you're like, I've been praying, but this addiction has not, I have not been freed of this addiction. I've been praying, but I still am feeling this anxiety and fear in my heart. I been praying, but the trauma that I suffered as a child still haunts me. I've been praying, but every single night I wake up with terrors at night. I've been praying, but these thoughts have still been coming in my head. This is it right here. This is the weapon right here. Begin to fast. And what fasting does, is it opens our eyes. It opens our ears. It opens our hearts. And we begin to get into this level of intimacy with the Father. Like, none, like no other time. This week, it was really, you know, the first couple days of the fast was so easy. And I said, okay, I can do this for 21 days. And then Friday came. And I was like, oh my gosh, I am tired of eating fruit and vegetables. I need something that tastes good. I need some other flavor. I cannot eat bananas no more. Broccoli is horrible. And I just began to pray. I said, God, you're going to have to take a hold of my thoughts right now. I literally opened the refrigerator and I'm like, ah. <laughs> 
And it's harder if you're a mom and you got to cook for your child. And my child is like, mommy, you got to taste this. Taste it, taste it, taste it. I'm like, back away. In Jesus' name, I cannot taste it. And then he tells his dad, mommy only eats healthy stuff now. (laughs) But it's so important that we understand. Worship team, you can come back up. It's important that we understand. And I said this last week, and I just want to kind of explain to you guys. When we pray, we posture ourselves. We understand, okay, I have a father who I can come and I can pray. I can talk with him. But when we fast, we position ourselves like David. I'm going to stay here, and I'm going to win this battle. Amen? And you must be thinking, how did this story end? That David win that war. And he did. He won the war. And in verse 45 of, you know, the chapter we're walking here, chapter 17 of 1 Samuel, it says this. He tells the giant this. You come against me with a sword and a spear and a javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord's Al- Lord Almighty, the God of armies of Israel, whom you have defied. You're you're not fighting alone. The Lord's armies are on your side. And I know that this right here, it's like, yes, I can fight and I'm gonna win this battle. But your fight may have to be over and over again. Just in a few chapters ahead of this chapter here, chapter 22, we see David having to fight the Philistines again. And the word actually says that he got tired. And a friend of his, I will not dare to say his name, I don't wanna butcher, (laughs) but his friend had to fight with him. So sometimes the fight that you're fighting, you're gonna have to do it in community. Maybe you're tired and you're like, I've been doing this fight and I haven't seen the other side. And I just want to present to you this beautiful community. And I want to remind you that you're fighting with the Lord's armies on your side. Amen. So as I was praying and putting this message together, God gave me a declaration. And I would love if you would partner with me today in faith, if we could all stand up and just remind us of who we are. Remind remind our minds that we have a God that is so big and so big. And even though we may think that we are small, He is for us and He is with us. So if you could put your hands in your heart and say these words with me. Ready? I am set, for I am the son and daughter of the Most High. I don't run from any battles because God is with me. I fight with courage. When the enemy tries to say I am not enough, I come against him with the sword of God that says I am more than a conqueror. I choose faith over fear. I fight with faith. When fear knocks on my door, I come with the authority God has given me in the name of Jesus. I have the mind of Christ. I'm equipped with the armor of God. God is faithful and I am faith filled. Amen. Maybe you need to take a screenshot of that today. So you can speak tomorrow when the thoughts try to come to your mind. So you can speak on Tuesday when the feelings begin to want to grow. So you can be reminded that God has filled you with faith. Amen. During this next song, it's a beautiful, beautiful song written by our team. I want you to pay attention to the lyrics. And our leaders will be out in the back. I'll be out in the back. We would love to pray with you and be with you as a friend. Amen. Let's worship.
is not to be on the sideline anymore. We're not just going to watch and watch and, and enjoy others' faith. We're going to choose to put our faith in you today. We fight with your word. We fight with the spirit. We fight with the helmet of salvation, with the shield of faith. God, we fight today with you because you are redeeming this whole world back to yourself. And we're going to be part of it. Lord, bless the teaching of your word today. Seal it in our hearts as your sons and daughters. And make that declaration we said together. Make it true in our hearts this week. As we continue to pray and fast in your presence, meet us there, we pray. In Jesus' name, we pray. And everyone said together, amen. Wow. Believe it or not, we're not done yet. So we, as you continue to be involved in worship, have a seat and check out this video. All of us are following something and being discipled by someone. We are in an all-out war for our spiritual formation. Everything is competing for our time, attention, and affection. We all long to be our true self and reach our full potential. Jesus invites us to follow him and become who we are born to be, defiant disciples, people of powerful love. Join us for a nine-month discipleship journey of courageous obedience with a cohort of sacrificial community as we learn to become like Jesus in radical generosity, overflowing honor, and fearless honesty. Get closer to God than you ever have before. This could be the answer you've been searching for in prayer. Awesome. Becoming a people of love and becoming a defiant disciple. If you want more information about that, go to our website. Well, this is my friend John. He's going to talk to us a little bit about giving. Yes, good morning, everyone. And as we talk about being defiant disciples, we're going to continue our worship experience by receiving our tithes and offerings. There's three ways that you can give this morning. You can give by text, by phone, online, or if you're old school, you can go in the back by envelope. Talking about defiant discipleship, part of that is really being generous like Jesus. In order to do that, there's actually steps that we can take to get to that end goal. These steps are this. One, if you haven't given in a while, you can start to give something. Two, we encourage you to give consistently. Three, if you've been giving consistently, we want to be able to encourage you to give a certain percentage of your income. Now, this looks different from one person to another, but as you start giving consistently in a percentage, we believe that God will meet you where you're at and bless you so that you can continue to be generous with more. The fourth step is to be able to go above and beyond and give abundantly. And church, I encourage you this morning, whichever step you're on this month, Take that next step with us this morning and that next step this month with us. Church, will you join us as we pray over our tithes and offerings? God, we thank you so much, Lord, God, that you give us the tools, the resources to be generous how we can with the blessings that you've given us, Father. God, we pray over our tithes and offerings. They would grow and flow in Jesus' name, that you would help each and every one of us to take that next step in generosity with you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, I want to invite you to stand up on your feet. We're going to bless you with Psalm 121. Put your hand on your heart this morning. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. Have a great Sunday, everyone.